Now we're going to be working with absolute value uh, functions and taking the limit of absolute value functions. And this particular one is one-sided, but they won't always be one-sided. Notice this absolute value function, there is something in the denominator. So normally we have the parent function of absolute value when it looks like this, f of x is equal to this. Well, that graph would look like this. And if it was negative absolute value of x, that graph would look like that. Well, that's not what we're talking about. So do not think that these will be a V-shape. They will not be a V-shape. But before we do this page right here, um, we're going to come over here. All right, so this is what the parent graph would look like. The absolute value of x over x, or you could have x over the absolute value of x. But I'm using this one as an example. Remember when we have um, just the regular absolute value problems, if we have the absolute value of x is equal to 3, well, 3 spaces away from 0. Remember, absolute value means distance from 0, and or distance anyway from something. Uh, and negative 3 is 3 spaces away from 0. So there are actually, you'd say x is equal to 3, x is equal to negative 3. There are two separate things going on. Well, in these problems, there will also be two separate things going on. There will be the positive version. We're going to remove the absolute value. The positive x over x, and then the negative x over x. So it's both versions. And what is 1x divided by 1x? Yes, 1. And what is negative 1x over 1? Negative 1. Another way to say that is what is 1x over 1x, which is 1. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. So let's put in a few values and let's see what happens. So when we put negative 3 in for both of those x's, Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. We put 2 in there, negative 2. We're going to get 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. And when we put negative 1 in there, negative divided by, positive divided by negative is negative 1. Now, when we put 0 in there, the absolute value of 0 over 0, well, we can't have 0. That's where there will be an asymptote, right? At 0, there would be an asymptote because we can't, uh, we can't have 0 in the denominator. So we're going to go ahead and put one over one is one, two over two is one. 3 over 3 is 1. Oops, not 3. 3 over 3 is 1. So look at what this is going to look like. So there's our asymptote right there. And then notice, everywhere less than 0, all the values less than 0, there's going to be a horizontal line at negative 1. So I'm going to put a hollow dot right there, and then I'm going to go this way. And then notice, all the values integers greater than 0, there's going to be a horizontal line at 1. And guess what? This is what the absolute value graphs are going to look like every single time when there's a numerator and denominator. All right, so now let's break down what, what we need to do here. Um, actually, well, I guess I already wrote that down. We can go ahead and go with it. Um, another way to think about this is I went ahead and just put plus signs and negative signs. Look at if if we're headed towards negative three from the left, then the negative three to the left is a little bit. It'll be negative three point oh 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 one. Well, the opposite of that is negative. The opposite of negative is positive, so that will be positive 3.001 subtract 3, so that will be a positive down here. Okay, and we do the same thing up there. 
then that's also going to be a positive. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. But then we have to do the negative version. So let us move this stuff out of the way. So notice what I did. I put 5 on the outside of parentheses. The limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. And then the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. I have the negative version, negative 5. And then look at what happens. Now you've got negative x subtract 3 over negative x subtract 3. Whoops. That cancels, leaving positive 5. That cancels, leaving, I forgot to put that negative 5 right there. So what we have is the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left is positive 5, and the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left is negative 5. And then notice, where can x not be? Well, it looks like it can't, x can't be, uh, we can't have x at 3, but if I put 3 in there, the opposite of 3 is negative 3. So at negative 3, there's going to be an asymptote. So let's see what we've done here. So notice, we have this asymptote in negative 3, and then look at what happened. On this other graph, I said this is what the graph is always going to look like. Look, we're headed to the right, we're headed to the left, but the original function right up here was positive. Now what do you notice? There's all these negative signs. Remember, what does the negative sign on the outside of an x tell you to do? Reflect it over the x-axis. So normally, the 5 would be here, and the negative 5 would be here, but it got reflected over the x-axis. All right, so we're going to quickly do this again. All I did was I rewrote this into the positive and negative version. So it's 5 times negative x minus 3 over negative x minus 3. And then I did the same thing, but I did the negative version. And that was the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. Those canceled, and what we are left with was two constant limits. As x approaches negative 3 from the left, we had 5, and we had the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. We had negative 5, but then when we graphed it, you have to decide. So we had to put this at negative 3, and remember, oh, I, I'll just do it this way. And then up here at 5, remember, everything got reflected. So there's a hollow dot there, a hollow dot here. So now when you ask yourself, what is the limit as uh, negative, uh, as x approaches negative 3 from the left? We're up here at positive 5. All right, that's it for, we're going to be practicing that quite a bit. Uh, anyway, that's it for now.